Josh Jones! Josh mother Jones! We'll beep that out. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're not supposed to say that. I'm say sure. what? Uh, Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I rewatched that like a couple weeks ago. I was like, oh, wait fun. till Thursday's yeah, video. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, Josh, pick out the arrow that I've used the last three years. Killed a lot of good stuff with that. Uh, which broadhead was I using? Oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I, my 31 is set up for that right now, mm -hmm. but I did some tinkering with the 27. When I'm saying 27, I'm talking the V327. Mm -hmm. So I killed my bear with the X Impact. Let's grab that. And I killed it with an iron wheel, single bevel, mm -hmm. 125 solid. Pretty cool. And then after I did that, you said, hey, try this arrow. Tell me what you think. I did, I done did it. By the way, this matched up with that sight tape, so I didn't have to change a thing. Yeah, they weigh the same. Shot with, long distances. This thing was awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's a extreme velocity rip yep. from victory. Yep. Spinal lined, mm -hmm. five millimeter, mm -hmm. great FOC. Oh, well, depending on what adapter you put into it. But yep. when you start with a lighter overall shaft, you can add more weight to the front and end up at the same overall weight, but significantly higher FOC. You slapped a, a gold tip. I put a gold tip, 75 grain stainless steel insert in it. For the smallest one they make in that diameter, it's for like a 600 spine, if I remember right. right. But it was really close to the actual carbon collar diameter. So there's almost no lip there. It's really flush. Okay. So so been shooting that i think i'm going to tack with this uh you'd be stupid not to there you go uh next i built some airstrikes really dope really dope arrow it feels it's nice to touch it's got a very slick finish on there's that. something on there that's yeah. awesome uh it's got a collar in the back i don't feel like it's super necessary but it does right yeah, it comes with a collar on the rear, which from a target standpoint is a good thing just in case somebody else nicks your arrow. But from a hunting standpoint, you're putting extra weight in the back end of the arrow for little to no benefit because you're not like group shooting on an animal. Okay. So it's not going to matter there. I liked it. Uh, the component tree, this is not what it comes with. So that's an optional piece and that's the same insert that we put in the RIP Extreme Velocity, but they come with an aluminum version of this and a collar. And they also, the colors are also compatible with the steel. So you can put a collar system from gold tip on any of them. And that's kind of the beauty of using a large manufacturer's insert system is it's typically not nearly as expensive as an aftermarket. Right. It's, it's got a great system. I mean, this is a great arrow. It's a great arrow other than they can't seem to ship them. That's a problem. And they don't make them in different straightnesses. So this is a, this is a 1000 arrow, which is awesome. I mean, if, if you want to spend $200 a dozen on arrows, it's a great way to go, but you don't have a cheaper option. Whereas in with the RIPs and, uh, and I want to say black Eagles as well, you can get them in three different straightnesses. So you can get a 1000 straightness, a 3000 straightness or a 6000 straightness. Okay. So for your dinking around for most of the year, not using broadheads, you can use a cheaper arrow, Nice. but everything else is exactly the same. It's literally build all the arrows, put them in through a machine, cull them, whatever their straightness tolerance variance is, they get sorted that way. But mm -hmm. it's still the same arrow. Right. You're just not paying as much for the ones that aren't so straight when you're not trying okay. to steer a broadhead, and that's really the only time that that matters. Next up, Easton, long range, four millimeter. Uh, I haven't shot one. I haven't shot one. Uh, but I do know that they come with this little guy. They that's do. pretty slick outsert. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, wow. it's aluminum, so... Not really durable, but it, yeah. yeah, it does Come go on. over the end of the arrow and it does mate pretty snug and it's down inside the arrow a little way. So that should help align it pretty well. I just wouldn't trust it to take any kind of an impact, anything hard without bending. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to use this arrow this year, folks. I'm not going to do it. I'm what not going to do it. Do you want to know why I eliminated it? Why is that? Uh, aluminum outsert, number one. Um, if I were to use it, I would be ordering the iron wheel, Aaron Schneider. Of course you know, Absolutely. the insert system yeah. where it fits to that four mil and then I can put that single bevel, but that's really the only component sheet that would make sense for that. And... Well, that's pretty true for all the four millimeter Five arrow. mils, I feel like they're just a little bit more structurally sound. Would you agree? Well, with the five mil, you have so many more options. One, there's tons of insert systems for them. You're not restricted to, you know, three or four. You, yeah, you can use anybody's because um, they all make a very similar arrow in, in internal and external diameter. Uh, there's a lot of aftermarket options for them. You can get lighted knocks across the board for them if you like to shoot lighted knocks. Uh, it's just overall, it's it's just a bit more versatile option. And you can get all the way down to like a in a 300 spine, you can get RIPs, a 7.1 grain per inch. 
And I want to say like the extortions all the way up at 12, 13 an inch. FMJs in 300 are like 12 or 13 yeah. an inch. But if you want a heavy arrow, there's options. If you want a light arrow, there's options. But it still gives you the ability to use the same insert system options and lighted knock options. So to me, that diameter is by far the smartest diameter to use. It really is. Yeah. Well, speaking of that diameter, I mean, these are our options, right? We got all five mils here. This is a four. Oh, no, that's gone. So the right. X-Impact, I liked it for the record but they're not in stock anywhere, and that's a problem for me. So that's what eliminated that, was just supply and demand. There's a lot of demand, rightly so. Phenomenal arrow, loved it. I wanted to use it, but I don't have a relationship with them, first and foremost. Yeah. And everyone I know can't even get them, so who am I to get one? Sure. So they're out. So this leaves us to tried and true, access. Mm -hmm. Airstrike, although, I had some issues with the componentry that came with it mm -hmm. and pulling out of targets and yeah. breaking easily. So you're out. And then that leaves us down to these three. So talk to us about this, which I know nothing about RIP TKOs. Okay, so in, uh, in Victory, they make three different arrows that are this diameter. They make a RIP Extreme Velocity, a traditional RIP, and an RIP TKO. If you're looking for super, super light, super fast, it's an RIP Extreme Velocity. If you're looking for the most durable one they make, it's an RIP TKO, hence What's the reason the we one? don't. It's just a regular RIP, okay. and it's a regular wrap. It's like this, but heavier, okay. um, but and similar weight to this, but because this is woven, it's more durable. Mm. So we eliminated that right out of the discussion, because, I mean, if you're gonna pick one of them, you're gonna pick one of those two. Right. You're not gonna pick the other one. Uh, this is a lighter grain print shaft than your axis, so. Is we're, it? Oh, 100%. So an RIP TKO in 300 spine is 8.8, .8 and in Axis is 10.7. Yep. So you're 0.9 an inch, so on your arrows, you're roughly 22 to 25 grains, somewhere in there, yep. lighter out of, the, out of the gate. So in an example of a 340 with your 50 grain, right, you can build this arrow in a 300 with a 75 grain insert, and they weigh the same. Ooh. But you've got 25 grains more in the front with a similar durability factor in the same diameter. So this just makes more sense as long as you're happy with how it performs when you try it. Now we gotta figure out which way I'm gonna fletch. Am I gonna go single bevel? So we're gonna migrate into, so guys, but we're probably gonna mo mosey on over to this guy. I have some ideas on the components. You're not gonna like it, Josh, but we're, <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. And then I love this arrow. It is like, these two are just, like I'm going to tack uh -huh. with a 27. Yeah. Who does that? Only you. I'm confident. <laughs> That's how confident with that short bow. Yeah. So, um, but with the 31, I want to use something a little bit heavier out west. Mm -hmm. So let's, we're going to migrate guys. Last little couple minutes of this video is all about which broadheads I personally am going to invest in. Go ahead and comment below on which broadheads you think we should check out um, because you were going to comment anyways about what you thought we should try. So go ahead and do that. We appreciate your feedback, but let's go ahead and go through a couple of the broadheads that I brought you and tell me what you think. So first one I brought you is that wide from Iron Will. And I saw Brandon McDonald shoot a bear with this. He didn't make the best shot ever. Um, and he would he would agree, like he his shot selection, he was shooting frontal on a bear. Mm -hmm. This is about all you got. Mm -hmm. And the shot was at 50. And he think he just maybe hit right here. Mm -hmm. But that wide broadhead mm -hmm. saved his bacon. Yeah. Totally severed his the bear's elbow. The entry hole was undeniable, and the blood trail asked him was insane. So I'm thinking about shooting this for elk as long as I know that I'm not shooting past 60 on elk because this doesn't fly that good past 60 from personal experience. It's a lot of surface area. What do you think? Um, I, I'd, I'd question shooting a very large animal with it, not to say it's not a good idea, but that's a very big hole that you're trying to cut with a fixed blade broadhead, and I thought we were trying to penetrate over anything. So I would think broadheads that have a little smaller cut in diameter would make a whole lot of sense. If you really want to penetrate, and that's what your goal is, that makes a lot more sense than that to me. It really does. The single bevel? Well, yeah. I mean, you're going to get you're going to get probably 10 to 20% better penetration just because of the single bevel. Gun to your head. Yeah. Put that wide. Put the wide out of there. Because I ain't going to shoot. What if I have to shoot a follow-up shot? Yeah. Okay. And it's past 60. I agree. You want, you want some accuracy there. These are the same weight. Yep. One's a double. One's a single. Mm-hmm. Which one's going to penetrate more? Single. No question. No question. You're talking about 20%, 15, somewhere in that, around there, because there's just less resistance. If you ever tried cutting with a single bevel yeah. knife, it's crazy. It's like, it feels weird, and there's way less, 
Yeah. Way less pressure, and it always cuts the direction that cut is. So you like try to cut a tomato, and it goes, Wee! Wheels. and there's like no pressure on it. It's, it's crazy. It's totally different. So single bevel makes a hell of a lot of sense. There's just only so many out there. And once you go to the blade angle, like you're right, you have to fletch right. And yet most of your arrows are clocking left. So now you're losing a little bit. Uh, uh, not as much, though. I mean, that that's going to be superior. Yeah, that's... That's sure. not a concern. Yeah. Will this do a Tim Connor? So Tim shot his whitetail buck this year. Yeah. It was going and went in great. And then it came out towards his butt, way out that way. And yep. I was like, what in that will this do that? That's any any lead cut two blade can do that. I don't I don't care oh, if it's I, I don't I don't it, it's just likely to happen if you hit like a rib or something, it's gonna change deflection because it's not it's not designed to force its way through something. It's designed to take the path of least resistance, which is part of why it penetrates so well. And when you have a lead cut like that, you can change your angle really easy because there's nothing stopping it from happening. When you go into a three blade, it's not nearly as easy to change your direction because the other vector of blade is going to try to keep forcing it in the direction the energy is trying to transfer. Um, my dad shot traditional most of his life and shot, you know, nothing this sophisticated, but something like this. Yeah. And he'd frequently change angle a lot okay like it's it's common eh. but if you're trying to get out the other side and yeah. penetration is your worry and your concern that makes sense if you want your arrow to go the path in which you hit it at the angle in which you're trying to shoot it a three blade broadhead makes a ton more sense that's kind of what i want guys i want whatever i'm aiming for the exit if this if that makes sense like a lot of folks are looking at where they're going to hit i'm always thinking on animals where's this arrow going to end up out and that's the shot angle i'm looking for like yeah. the exit so yeah i kind of want a straight trajectory through i want three i want a bigger hole on the entry and an exit sure. if i didn't if i wasn't concerned i'd shoot a mechanical yeah i mean a two blade's going to cut a slit into something even with bleeders where a three blade's going to give you a hole that won't close okay. so you're going to get a bigger hole so i like this green ring from micro hades three blade i don't need to talk about it i talk about it all the time right, it's right, awesome right. it's proven okay uh we have some other good options we're looking at annihilators and we're looking at vpas Let's talk about them. And this is where we're going to finish this video, guys. There'll be a second part when we test and we give you the final winner. You do your tinkering. It's called ABT, always be tinkering. Don't trust what I'm tinkering for my setup and my archery skill set. Go test your archery skills, your archery setup, and see what works best for you. Okay, so we got two annihilator broadheads over here. This is the XL. It's got a larger cutting diameter. This is the standard smaller cutting diameter. We didn't check on whether or not these are machined or whether these are molded but if they I'll are post it right below if here. they are machined um that's that's a pretty dope design pretty cool functioning head um you can if you if you don't have them at your local shop you got to go directly to them to get them because nobody else can mail order them but them um, but if these are machined great if not eh, i'm not sure vpa is 100 percent machined steel they make this in stainless they make this in tool steel uh, a lot of different varieties and weights, sizes, dimensions, etc. But this is one of the few fully CNC machined, American-made broadheads on the market. I'm into that. Gotta like America. And the other one that we threw out here, just because it's new and we haven't played with it much yet, but it's very squatty, is the SS3 Slick Trick. This is Slick Trick's first non-replaceable blade broadhead. I think it's machined. I'm pretty sure it's machined, but I could be wrong. We'll it looks machined. We will find out in post. Uh, but the blade angle is like ridiculously squatty. So you're going to lose a bit of penetration on that. But we are talking about a 100 grain, one piece, non-vented three blade broadhead. That's pretty impressive really for what it is. Um, but it won't penetrate nearly as good as the blade angles on this. So I'd put it like similar to that. Um, so these are all really interesting, intriguing broadheads. But I would tend to lean towards something that was machined over molded. Because molded never really gets sharp. Uh, anytime we've ever dealt with molded broadheads, you get blades that just never fully get sharp to where I would feel comfortable with it like nicking a hair or cutting a cutting a vein or an artery as you glance by it and just barely hit it like in Brandon's example you know if you didn't have a super sharp would you have cut all those pieces that actually killed that bear possibly not so I really emphasize not using a molded broadhead at least the blades if the blades are molded whether it's a replaceable blade or not I, they just don't cut I shot um, t-locks for a long time um, and man, they just, they flew really good. They put some really cool holes and things. And I never had a blood trail like I thought I should have ever. And then switched to a broadhead that was similar, but wasn't a molded blade. And I immediately had blood trails hitting in the same spot, same, same animals out of the same area, same situations, shooting from the same freaking tree stands for God's sakes and blood immediately blood the whole way to the animal versus 
almost no blood for 50, 60 yards. Animal piled up, great shot, but just didn't bleed. And that was a molded blade, not a machined blade. So I'd steer away from molded if those are molded. But if they're not molded, that's a cool little head. We wanted to just take the time to show you the process, a long conversation of how we look at different arrows, how we consider different options, how I like to bounce my ideas off somebody who's a wizard, and then he can bounce his ideas off somebody who actually hunts. And <laughs> so we can put our heads together. But um, all kidding aside, thanks for coming on, Josh. That like was I hurtful. <laughs> you don't hunt, man. I invited Josh to bear camp and you didn't make it. I got a guy flying in from Arkansas while well, you invited me to hunt. Give me a break. Um, okay, so when you guys my, watch well, this. My wife's new floors in her house were more important to her. That's the truth. We went through a different options of different arrows. We didn't hit every manufacturer. Don't worry. Go test it yourself. We're just showing you what we're looking at, what we're tinkering with. We will have a decision for what broadhead combination that I'm going to use for elk in 2021, what Tim is going to use for elk in 2021, he's going to Wyoming, and what MFJJ is going to use out of a ground blind when he shoots his elk. <laughs> so either way, we're going to give you our three options. We'll go test and show you the results. Appreciate you watching. Subscribe to Josh's channel, Podium Archer. Tap the bell to be notified when we drop content. We're pretty regular and we're very thankful for your support. We'll catch you on the next one. them together so these are exactly the same not even kind of the same like